As you would have seen by the title for the video, uh, power requirements, cable sizes, and the uses of extension leads for welding machines. I'll try and cover as much as I can in this video. I don't want to cover everything, and it's probably impossible to cover in one video. It just will be a one-part video. But if I don't, if I leave something out or something that wasn't clear, uh, get back to me in the comments. And if I can give you an answer, I will. But I can't cover every single aspect of power requirements for um, every aspect of welder. So we'll be talking more relevant to DC machines at the start. And the numbers that I'll be talking about in reference to welding machines will be more reserved to inverter machines. Uh, as far as including you, for those guys who have come to watch that have transformer machines, you all have to go probably to, I don't want to push you off to Google, but you will have to probably refer to Google as far as comparing your numbers for, for your transformers, but you will have to add a, a good percentage of um, power requirement for a transformer. But the cable sizes and the ampages uh, will be applicable to your machine. So whatever your machine needs, the cable sizes and the ampages, which I'll explain in a moment, which is in the middle of the screen, uh, will be applicable to transformers and inverters anyway. So just going through quickly, uh, without dragging on too long, and I'll try and get the max information in. Um, we'll just go from the top of the screen, which is probably a good place to start. Just giving you some reference to wattages and not going through the whole law of wattages and things like that to drag the video on. But 10 amps is equivalent to uh, 2,400 watts. So how much is 2,400 watts? So to give you a reference of what might be around you that could draw 2,400 watts would be um, I could probably say most electric toasters, but not all. Um, pretty much all electric water jugs. So for heating your water to make a cup of tea or coffee, uh, they're all 2,400 watt. Um, as far as industrial applications, possibly uh, a good one would be nine-inch angle grinders. They're pretty much all 2,400 watt. There might be some a little bit lower, but not much. Uh, but they all most of them run around at 2400 watts so that gives you some applicable to what how much is 2400 watts or you can refer to as how much is 2400 watts when we're talking about wattages later compared to welding machines so reading down through the list i've tried to add as much info in there as i can uh, going through cable sizes the ampage drawers for that cable size as a sort of reading down i won't read all of it most of it's applicable as you're reading down uh, 1.5 mil cable equals 16 amps, so you can pull 16, mil, uh, 16 amps through a 1.5 mil cable, 2.5 you can draw 20, and 4 mil draw 30, 40, uh, and so on down through the list there. So that's all the pick up all down to, way down to the bottom there, where you've got 16 mil cable, which can uh, maximum recommended ampage, that is, uh, of 70 amps or 71 amps. It will, it will vary depending on how the cable is laid. Um, as far as insulation, things like that, you don't want any insulation as a reference point to, you don't want any insulation at all around an electrical cable. They need to be in their best condition. They need to be um, put into cable trays and where they can radiate any heat that they generate into the open air, not be covered with insulation. So that's one thing you need to take into account. Yeah, you will lose some percentage of the ampage and voltage uh, carrying capacity of a cable if they're insulated or depending on how the and also the distance the cables are laid as far as where you're putting the power to but in this video we'll be just talking about domestic so we're not talking about running the cables for hundreds of meters anyway so um, the loss of uh, voltage over the distance probably won't be applicable too much to people in residential I'll say rural is obviously going to be a different situation but like, as I say can't cover everything but as far as domestic goes, the power requirements that you need will be applicable there. So those cables will draw that much power through and there will be some, maybe some minor drops and there might be some ampage increases possibly depending on how much power you're coming into your area too, which I'll cover a little bit further in the video. But looking over to the left, um, I've tried to add in gauge sizes for those guys who work in gauge rather than in uh, metric measurement. So we've got 12 gauge, 2.5, 10 gauge, 4 mil, 8 gauge, 6 mil, and 10 gauge, uh, sorry, 6 gauge, uh, 10 mil. Uh, so, and, that, and that's applicable to the ampages. So that's the recommended ampages to drag through that size cable. So if you've got a, uh, if you go to your meter and you look at either your uh, fuse or uh, a circuit breaker, 
um, the ampage rating for that um, breaker or fuse will be that closed cable will be connected to that fuse so um, I know a lot of guys who have welding machines or I shouldn't say I know a lot of guys I know a lot of guys will do it I should say I should keep that clear I know a lot of guys will have dramas with getting enough power to their welders and they will opt to, to put a larger breaker or larger fuse in it's not an unheard of thing and I know most of us probably are guilty of doing silly things like that and it is a silly thing to do because you can overheat the cable and and ultimately well, in, in extreme cases of course you can burn your house down but obviously that's an extreme case but obviously it depends on how much ampage you're trying to pull through the poor cable so uh, that's one thing to think about before you get any bright ideas about pulling out a 20 amp breaker and and jamming a 32 or a 40 amp breaker in there just so you can run your wire right in your garage so that's something you need to think about think about the link between uh, the breaker and your welding machine and that's the cable so those cable sizes will only carry that amount of ampage so if you try to push those cables any uh, higher they will reach their upper extremes and it's up, whatever happens after that is whatever happens after that so stick to the recommendations if we don't stick to recommendations well you take it on your own shoulders and what happens after that so just going down now um, I think we've covered most of that. If any of that's not really clear, uh, just get back to me. But jumping over to the welding side, which is over the right-hand side of the screen, about midway down, uh, I've got 160 amp, 200 amp, uh, 250 amp. So they're applicable sort of welding machines. There are a few uh, mixed ones in there, 180s, 225s, and so on. They're all over 240s. There. I'm not going to write down everything. So, But they're a common sort of uh, size of welding machine that you would buy as far as... Um, Probably more so MIG than stick. Uh, probably more so the sticks are probably smaller size machines for home use, but more so MIGs, more so with these power requirements that are there. And the wattage is next to those. So that's the average wattage that that machine will draw. Um, and that's drawing on when it's continuously welding, not when it, the inrush of power coming into the actual welding machine, which is where most people come undone with circuit breakers. Not so much with fuse wires. Fuse wires in general are a little more tolerable to inrush or the power it takes to get the welder started. So when you see the maximum amount of current required for your machine, that's what they're talking about. And that's reflective in what I've got written there. So the 250 amps is written next to 50 amps for a reason. That is the recommended um, cable size, which is 10 mil and 10 mil cable will do an average maximum of 50, uh, 50 amps. So that's the the applicable cable to that size machine. So a lot of guys are probably looking at this and saying, well, I've got a 250 amp machine and I just plug it into the wall and it runs fine. It must be running on 20 amps. That That is true. But the thing is you need to think about, are you well at 250 amps? That's the question you need to ask. And no, you won't be because you can only get so much power through a certain size cable. So as you can see, as you're reading down through the list there, there's no way you're going to pull 50 amps through that little 20 amp cable. It just doesn't work. I mean, you might, but the the um, if you can get a breaker big enough to hold that, and if you do, your cable will probably glowing red anyway, trying to pull that much ampage through that size cable. So, as I say, that's a grey area that I don't want to get into, and I'll leave you guys up to your discretion what you do in your own workshop or home. That's your decision. But I can just show you what the recommendations are. If you don't want to follow the recommendations, that's your choice. So we're going down through the list now quickly before dragging this on. I'm already talking too much already. 160 amp generally requires 30 amps. 200 amp machine generally requires 40 amps. 250 amp machine requires 50 amps. When I say generally required, I mean the initial arcing that you will get from the start. When I, sort of, I should probably shouldn't use the word, the term arcing, but the inrush to cover you for the inrush. So that's not going to throw off your breaker. So, and those cable sizes, again, are applicable to the amperages you require, okay? You can weld, as I say, with a 250 amp machine on 20 amps or 2.5 mil cable, but you won't weld at 250 amps. If you go and set the machine up in a properly set up uh, environment where you've got the correct size breaker and the correct size cable, then you'll see what a 250 amp machine welds like. 
and it won't be like your 250 amp machine at home unless you're running a 10 mil cable with the 50 amp breaker or fuse wire um, as I say your 250 amp machine in most cases you'll probably just be welding maybe one mil up to possibly five or six mil and you might just get away with it on 20 amps um, even then at that higher even then get into that thicker material you're really pushing it on as you can see there 160 amps it's not long before a 250 amp machine is going to reach 160 amps before you start getting up to that 30 amps or even 40 amp where you, where you just don't know with a 250 amp machine what you're drawing and you just from from an operator's point of view they don't really care they just want to weld and as long as the breaker stays on they'll just keep welding but uh, as this video sort of points out these are recommendations uh, that's not under my control of what you guys do or don't do but they're the recommended cable sizes for those applicable welders you can choose to do what you want after that that's totally up to you um, covering AC now, as far as AC welders go, this includes more so transformer welders and AC, doesn't matter if it's an inverter. If you weld on AC, you can pretty much double the number of the requirement. So AC uh, high frequency as far as welding uh, non-ferrous metals with an AC-DC TIG weld I'm talking. Um, you will require roughly about double, okay? So that's just a reference, okay? Don't hold me to that, but that's an, an average reference point to start from. So if you want to clarify that, go onto any website that sells welding machines or, or um, AC-DC TIG welders and look at the DC machine power requirement and then go to the same machine or applicable machine um, that does weld on AC and you'll see the amount of power requirement for the AC versus the DC. The DC is a lot more energy efficient and it doesn't require as much ampage to run that particular machine. So hopefully that sort of makes a bit of sense as far as that goes. Uh, the power requirements and cable size I think I've already covered. Cable size is applicable to ampages, okay. Uh, extension leads, um, where possible, and in most cases, or in my case, all cases, unless you really need to, and I say really need to, don't run extension leads. Um, they don't like uh, really tolerating uh, extension leads. When I say tolerating, I'm saying if you're welding at a machine that's rated for that ampage. So if you're only going to use a 250 amp machine to weld 1.6 mil, uh, mil steel, well then, it's probably not going to be a concern. But if you want to start welding to the maximum that machine's capable of, maybe 10, in, 10 mil or half inch plate, you know, 250 amp machine's capable of that, well then you're going to run into trouble. Um, it won't, you probably won't get it to do that. If you do, well then, you're doing pretty well. Obviously you've got, you know, you've got God on your side or something because that machine can't pull enough amps through that size cable. As you can see, there's a big difference between 2.5 and 10 mil cable. It's four times the cable to get it up to 50 amps, which is the recommended size for 250 amps. So <clears throat> if you want to set up a welding bench and you're asking the question, what size cable should I run? So to cover yourself, um, if you're going to pull cable, it doesn't really matter. If you're going to run a new cable, put a big cable in. So what I recommend for pretty much anyone that's going to put on a single phase machine is 10 mil cable. Regardless, you're going to run a 160 or a 260 amp machine. It doesn't really matter. Run that 10 mil cable if you're going to pull the fresh cable over. And you should have enough power at your meter to be able to pull 50 amps through it. Generally in domestic, I can only say on my part of the world, 63 amps uh, is a very common size at the breaker so that's allowing for a little bit of uh, inside your house someone doing something inside the house um, you know, making a cup of tea or putting the toast on so and you, and you can still use your welder but if you weld at night and someone's watching tv and someone else is on playing xbox and someone else is watching their laptop and you're out in the shed trying to weld at 250 amps uh, with your mig welder it just won't happen because you just won't have enough power coming in or in most cases won't have enough power coming from the street uh, whereas you run into environmental problems with other people around you who are using power at that time of the night <clears throat> if you want to get the maximum out of well machine well during the day when people are using less power uh, opposite for industrial applications 
uh, industrial applications. Most people are at home watching TV uh, with their heater on, relaxing, um, whereas, uh, and watching TV or whatever it is you do at night at home. But in industrial environments, opposite, because as I say, with the uh, everyone not working, uh, you'd be surprised how much there is. It's like an extra 50 amp machine uh, on the same setting. In most cases, it's three phase anyway. So uh, well, that's that's a different story anyway. We're just talking about single phase in this video anyway. We won't cover three phase. That's a totally different kettle of fish as far as welders go. But for most home guys, these are the problems they're going to run into. Is power requirement for a single single wire. So how much power you can pull through one wire. So you've got a supply and a return and an earth, obviously, with most, most cables that I know of in the world. And that's as much as you can pull through one single wire, regardless whether it's a three-phase wire or it's a single-phase wire. That is the maximum recommended ampage. It doesn't matter if your machine is a three-phase or whatever, that's the maximum you can pull out of it. And three-phase, if, you, if you're asking the question about three-phase, generally three-phase will use one-third of the power of a single phase. That might differ a little bit with welding machines, but generally with equipment, as far as mills and lathes, if your machine uses 10 amps on single phase, it will use about three and a half to four amps on three phase. So that's a big difference that three phase have. As I say, I didn't want to get into that too much because it's getting off track. I think that sort of covers most of it. Uh, I think I've talked about most of it that I can think of anyway that I can remember that I've covered. I don't edit my video, so it's hard to cut and paste for me. What you see is what you get. So... Um, hopefully the information was worthwhile. As I say, if it wasn't anything in there that I was um, uh, included or, uh, or probably not included, but that wasn't clear more so, there's probably a lot of things I didn't include in this video that I would have liked to include, but you guys just won't watch along that long a video if you've watched this long. So um, hopefully the information is useful to you. As I say, you get back to me if something wasn't clear that I've talked about in this video. Otherwise, that'll do for this one, and I'll see you on the next one.